want to bring back in criminal defense attorney Philip Holloway for a very specific reason, and that is because you're a former police officer, you are uh, a certified police instructor, and you yourself have defended many police officers who've been accused of misconduct, which is an incredible hat to wear right now as I beg of you to get me off the ledge and give me a defense for what I just witnessed that officer doing. I may not be able to give you what you're looking for because personally I have a big problem with this. The good questions are, does he need anger management? Does he need to be fired? Does he potentially need to go to jail? Or all of the above. You know, I don't have a problem with an officer using force when somebody's resisting, but they're only allowed to use enough force to meet whatever force they're being dealt with. So they cannot exceed that. Once the person is, is uh, in compliance and they have submitted, you've got to stop using force. He didn't stop using force. The law is very clear on this. What I really want to know is, is he potentially facing criminal charges? Because from what I saw in that video, it looks like that might be appropriate. So again, it's so important to know that context is key and we are coming upon a scene that has got preamble that we've never seen. That said, as I watch what happens in this great grandmother, and again, she's 51, so great grandmother aside, she's 51 years old, I can see her arms are flailing, and I can see that she isn't subdued, and I can see that could possibly be a, a defense. But when you have that non commensurate force, a, a woman on the ground and a very large uh, chips officer on top of her, it, can you see that, that that could be defensible? I don't see her arms flailing in his face, I see her trying to defend Protect. herself. That's yeah. what it looks like to me. Of course, we don't know the whole story. We didn't see what happened at the beginning. That's important to know. Oh, so I, I just, every time I see it, I just, uh, I kind of lose my breath, Phil. Question for you, she's in a 51-50 hold right now. Does that speak to this case at all? Does it help one side or the other that she may have troubles in some way? Well, if she's under some type of psychiatric detention, it might explain why she's wandering in and out of traffic. You know, this type of person, police officers deal with them all the time. They are oftentimes very difficult to deal with, and sometimes they do resist arrest and they are not compliant. However, it doesn't mean that you're allowed to repeatedly punch them in the face over and over and over again. You've got to stop using force when they do. Boy, I, I want to give the um, California Highway Patrol their due here. Yes. The assistant chief, his name is Chris O'Quinn, uh, when he was asked to comment on that uh, incident, this is what he said. Have a look. We're going to make a determination as to what transpired in this situation, and we will do the right thing with regard to dealing with the employee or the member of the public uh, in accordance with law and policy. And I have to wrap it there, Phil, but I'm just going to guess that no matter what they do, they're going to face a lawsuit, aren't they? They absolutely are. And I, I, I guarantee you that that uh, spokesperson you just saw is having a hard time dealing with this in the media. Oh, I'll bet. I'll bet. Oh, hey, Philip, thank you. It's great thank that you. you were able to put those hats on for us and give us that perspective. Anytime. We appreciate it. Thank you. Have a great afternoon. Thank you, Philip Holloway.